Welcome to Billy Ho Sports. Thank you for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like and comment on the videos. I hope you enjoy the show. Now, let's go! Hello, Billy Ho here. Real quick uh, hitter video on some tight ends for week two, DraftKings and beyond, really. I mean, they, these guys are all uh, might be potential plays in your home leagues, but uh, more like their low-key series uh, plays on, on sites like FanDuel, DraftKings, and whatnot, e emphasis on DraftKings. So uh, we're going to get into it right now and take a look at some of the guys that I like this week that uh, might go just a little bit overlooked. We'll see. All righty then. All right, we're looking at the the uh, board here, and uh, let's see what we got. First guy on the board is going to be uh, Mr. TJ Hawkinson for me. 4,700. Uh, he's not like a low that low-key. Everybody knows who he is. He's always got good upside. He had a decent week last week, but had seven targets, uh, four catches, 38 yards. Uh, but it's a high-scoring affair, so, you know, maybe he did get stuck with more blocking duties. But at the price of 4700 that is pretty expensive for a tight end. And uh, you can see the game log here. His longest was 16 yards. And, uh, yeah, definitely eight points at that salary is, is not good. But he always has touchdown upside. And uh, I'm going to say last year I remember Washington not being very good against tight ends. Of course, you know, they played Jacksonville, and now they're seventh because Jacksonville has the corpse of Evan Ingram and uh, Tarzan Dan. So uh, Arnold, that is. So those guys, uh, not really that impressive as tight ends go. So Hawkinson, I think, has a chance to surprise some people this week. He, he probably is TD dependent. Uh, he could get uh, – but, you know, he's had 100-yard games in the past before, and he can always get loose for a long gain. So he might be good for a 40-yarder or something to help somebody out. But the next guy up I like even more – and uh, and he's probably not your low key guy, Pat Fryermuth, uh, Fire Fryer, uh, one of my favorite Ramstein songs. Uh, I always think of Fryermuth when I when I hear that. Anyway, Fryermuth four point four, uh, still in that middling range where I think people want to pay up. And if you look, you got well Ertz. I don't know if people are going to be that hot on. Or Schultz. Pitts, I think people will run back. I think they'll give him another shot. Waller most definitely is in play. Andrews may not have sparkled week one, but he still had his seven targets. I mean, all he was really missing was a touchdown, and he could have easily done that. So I think people will pay up for mainly Andrews and Waller. And then guys like Hawkinson and Fryermuth will uh, go. Well, Fryermuth won't go overlooked. He had 10 targets last week. So uh, he may not go that overlooked, but I felt it paramount to mention him this week because he is emerging as one of the better tight ends in the league. So uh, if you if you see him out there, 4,400 might be as cheap as you get him anymore. We'll have to see. Uh, and then the next guy I wanted to talk about is in that same range as Tyler Higby, who had 11 targets last week. He won't see that again. Uh, and that was just a product of them getting blown out, I think. But he's always good for probably seven to nine targets. I mean, he might get seven. You know, he only had five for 39, but uh, he has touchdown upside as well. They're playing Atlanta. I don't think Atlanta's a, any kind of particular juggernaut versus a tight end. I don't, list, I don't look at these opponent ranks until it gets further in the season, but I think Higby has a chance to do some damage this week. Uh, Fant, I can't, I can't really recommend anybody from Seattle, 
because there was three different tight ends. If you saw last week, it was between Fant, Disley, and Parkinson, and Fant was the only one that didn't get a touchdown. Uh, he had only three targets or four targets, sixteen yards. So he was really the odd man out. Disley scored the first touchdown. Parkinson came in and, and shook his way to the end zone. Uh, that's a bad pun. Anyway, those guys up top. But now we uh, let's get into uh, sub four Ks and and uh, take a look at some guys here. Logan Thomas, I have to mention at thirty four hundred, he is probably going to be my most played tight end. He showed that he was healthy in that Washington Detroit game. He had six targets. I don't know if he was limited or not, but he played plenty of snaps. So uh, he had ample involvement in his first game since last year. So he it might take him a week, another week or two, but maybe one game can give him just a little more confidence in that knee. So uh, good price on him, though. I mean, versus in the same game, you got uh, TJ Hawkinson at, what, 1,300 more or 1,213? Okay, 1,300 more, I can count. Uh, another guy down in this range is Hunter Hurst. <laughs> That's what uh, Al Smizzle calls him. No, he's Hayden Hurst, Triple H. Eight targets last week in a game they were down in. They were chasing, so I don't know that he sees eight targets again. Uh, but he, he's he got sneaky upside as well. He, he had some good games. Atlanta drafted him as going to be like the next greatest thing in tight end. And then he just didn't really uh, mesh with that offense, I guess. But he he's a, he's an all right play, 3,600, probably go way overlooked, especially in the Cincinnati-Dallas game because everybody's going to be locked in on Mixon, locked in on Chase. Probably Boyd get a little bit more love. And depending – and actually, it depends on if T. Higgins plays. He, uh, he missed practice because of personal reasons but he's still in the concussion protocol and he won't fully come out of that till tomorrow. We will know tomorrow if he's a go or not. So we'll have plenty of time for that. We don't have to worry about a game time decision on concussion protocol. You either pass it or you don't pass it on Saturday. At least that's my understanding. Now we're dumpster diving, getting down in here a little bit. Uh, one guy I wanted to mention down here, is uh, the tight end for the Jets, Conklin. He uh, he had a pretty decent week. He only had 16 yards, but he did get the touchdown. Seven targets. C.J. Uzoma, who I thought was going to be the guy, was not. So I don't know if this injury uh, flared up on him in the during the game last week and he didn't really play all that much. Because if you go over, and I got the snap counts pulled up for these tight ends, uh, so I'm, I'm on the ball today. So we'll go down here to New Jersey. And I don't know that he – it's not showing him having any snaps, which I find odd. That might be why he had zero targets, 0, 0.00. Maybe he was he got hurt early in the game and uh, he had to leave. I don't know. But – Conklin is, if you remember, with the uh, Vikings last year, decently effective on, in certain games. And so going to Cleveland, they may have to use a tight end. Uh, they're not going to be able to run the ball as well. And uh, their Cleveland's defense, that, that might be a defensive team of the week. I don't know if Flacco, I think he'll be uh, pretty sure he's playing again this week. I think that that injury to uh, old Zoomer Zach is going to have him out a month. So we're going to assume he's out. The last guy I wanted to mention is almost a stone man, and I came across him. You might even hear him mentioned this week is Kylan Granson. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Seven targets in that game. Actually, Indy was chasing, so it's but it, it you are punting. So basically, he had the same snaps. He actually outsnapped Mo Alley Cox by one, 51 to 50, but he ran 30 routes versus Mo Alley Cox's 20 routes. So he had a significant advantage in the route running category. So at Jacksonville, who knows? I mean, all you need is this, you know, if you can get five to nine points out of him at 2,600, 
it's going to bail you out in most of your contests. It might not win you the Millie Maker, but it's going to put your it's going to put that green dollar sign next to your name. So uh, so keep a lookout on that. And uh, I thank you for watching the video. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. I thought I was going to get 200 last week, but I just short of it. So uh, help me out. Maybe get a friend or a family member. Uh, jump in there with an account. Shout out to the Flophouse Discord. Uh, you guys are always uh, running rough shot with the great takes. And uh, we got PGA rolling. Uh, things are lit up. People talk MMA all the time. People talk NASCAR. It's a forum for all sports. If I don't have it on there as a channel, you can sign up with me for free, 100% free, and request it. And I'll create a channel if you got some buddies. You guys want to talk freaking go low or whatever that shit is on where they, you know, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's all for today until the next time. Thanks for watching again and we'll see you soon.